So last video I briefly mentioned arcades and how important they used to be in the gaming landscape. But that got me thinking, hmm, maybe I should do a video on what I think are some of the best arcade cabinets that I played when growing up. Now, some of these do date back some time, back to the 80s. I went ahead and ranked my top 10 going from least to most immersive. Now, mind you, you will probably disagree with my choices, but that's fine. We all have different memories and experiences growing up playing these behemoth video game machines, but I think we can all agree on one thing. They were awesome. They were great. There is one small caveat I must mention before I start ranking them, though. I'm not going to be ranking arcade machines that are linked together. Like, say, for instance, Daytona USA and that whole 8 to 10 machine cabinet link they used to have. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be concentrating more on the single player experience. So with that said, let's get started. And at number 10, let's start off with Gauntlet by Atari. Now, compared to the other ones on my list, Gauntlet is not going to be a sit-down cabinet. But what this cabinet is missing in overly expensive mechanism and full-size sit-down cabinets, it more than makes up for that in the fun department. Now, this arcade cabinet brought to the masses the ability for four-player simultaneous play. Dandy, a game that served as inspiration for Gauntlet, introduced the four-player gameplay. But Gauntlet, in my eyes at least, popularized it. Now the four controls on the same cabinet allow friends and strangers to step up into the cabinet and join in on the fun all at once. And each one was color coded too. I mean how cool was that? And this is why it sits at number 10. At number 9 I got F-Zero AX by Sega using the Triforce arcade board. This arcade cabinet was a rare find in the wild but if you were able to find one not only did you get the fast arcade style racing gameplay that made F-Zero unique. But the moving seat in the cabinet gave you that loose, fluid feel of the racers in the game as you weaved and turned towards the finish line. I mean, the fact that you can bring in your GameCube memory card and insert it into the arcade cabinet to unlock secret courses on your F-Zero GX game back home was like icing in the cake. I mean, it was sweet. Nintendo, we need another F-Zero game, please. At number 8, I got by Specular Interactive. You're going to see a couple of their cabinets in this list. This sit-down cabinet is probably my wife's favorite arcade game. Wait, what's that? What? Oh, never mind. It's still Galaga. Anyway, she once spent three hours on this game while visiting Disney Quest back in 2012. She would not get off that machine. Great feedback mechanics, awesome sounds from the speakers located right above the cabinet marquee. It made this game a ton of fun. Now, it was a spiritual successor to Hydro Thunder. And oh boy, what a successor. For number 7, I got Lucky and Wilds by Namco. Now I only played this game twice, but I thought the setup on the cabinet was great. It was awesome. I mean the game was loads of fun. Ugh, too bad I ran out of quarters at the time to continue playing it, otherwise I would have continued playing it. You had two seats in the cabinet, one for the driver and the other side had a gun so your partner can shoot at the bad guys. It was a great team up concept. And to top it off, the game has fun and colorful graphics. I mean, it didn't take itself too seriously and I like that. I think the two player option is why this cabin is placed at lucky 7. Let's go! At number 6 I got Space Harrier by Sega. Now this game had two cabinets. Well actually most of these cabinets had two versions but this one was no different. Guess which one ranks at number 6. Yeah. I mean look at it. It's a beauty. It's awesome. Sega had a gift for making a great moving cabinets even in the early days. And this sit down cabinet? It shows that expertise. Great fast paced game, great music, and great loose controls. It makes this arcade an easy number 6 on my list. And let's see, number 5 we got, wait, another Sega arcade? Oh, outrun. What can I possibly say about this arcade that hasn't been said before? I mean you got the red car cabinet, it just exudes so many memories. For many little kids back then, this? right here was the closest thing we got to driving a car. And not just a car, no no no, a Ferrari. With a beautiful blonde sitting next to us, I mean, I've yet to do either in real life, but that's another story. Anyway, this cabinet is awesome. I mean, it had pedals, it had a gearbox, it had a force feedback feature, it had that cool looking steering wheel. <sighs> if you manage to somehow find one of these cabinets fully working, sit down and play it, you will not regret. At 4, I got Batman, the driving game, made by Specular Interactive again. 
It was also manufactured by Rod Thrills, which made the previously mentioned H2 Overdrive cabinet. What an awesome cabinet. I mean, I mean, look at it. You like Batman? Bam! You really like Batman? Bam! Batman himself probably has his cabinet as his bat layer. No doubt about it. Did I mention it has groovy lights? Cool number pad? The steering wheel has the Batman logo on it. This cabinet made sure that you knew it was a Batman game. You could have full amnesia, not know anything else in the world, including your family, your friend, events of your life, but you're gonna know one thing. This, this is a Batman arcade game. Enjoy your small victory, detective, for your world of green will one day be a tomb of ice. Now, before I get to my top three, I want to give a shout out to some honorable mentions. And let me start off the list by mentioning Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade. I mean, this arcade right here was a huge deal back then. I mean, the Turtles were at the top of their game. They were super popular at the time. Konami, great company, made some great arcade games. Now you bring the two together, four Turtles, four player cabinet, match made in heaven. Doesn't get better than this. Hang on. No, I'm not telling you to hang on. Hang on the game. This right here. It's a motorcycle racing game where you are sitting on a racing cycle that swerves from side to side as you race. Does it get better than that? Many have done it since, but this, this right here, this was the first. Operation Wolf. This right here is one of my favorite arcade shooters ever. I mean, that Uzi had that feedback mechanic and that little red button on the side to shoot the rockets because that, that's what Uzis do. It's awesome anyway, I don't care. The sound when that Uzi shoots though, just memorable. Love it. Jurassic Park Arcade. I mean, this cabinet was cool with its presentation on the outside. I mean, just look at it. It has dinosaurs. Can't go wrong with that. It had little curtains on the side, at least the one that I played on, uh, so you could play in privacy. I thought that was kind of cool. I would have ranked it really high, but at least the one that I played, it just had the two guns and nothing else that would put it in my top 10, but still a fun game. Marble Madness. You play as a marble using a trackball for a control. Doesn't get more straightforward than that. Plus, it's an awesome game. Loved playing it in the arcades, but I hated when I used to roll the trackball to one side and my hand would get pinched by the roller. And that hurt. Uh, to this day, I can't play any arcade games with a trackball because I fear that's going to happen to me. Great game. Painful memories. Alright, here we have APB. Now, this one here is not one many people remember. Now, my local arcade had the cabinet with the seat on it. What was cool about this cabinet was that it had sirens on the top for when you lit up going after a criminal. Now, the graphics in this game, <laughs> they're so funny. I mean, what the heck are they saying? I mean, this to me, it's a hidden gem in my opinion. Love it. Star Wars Arcade from 1983. Now, if you found the sit-down cabinet for this one, then you were rolling. I mean, this was the dream of like, any kid back then wanting to fly an X-Wing. I remember one time I wasted all my money playing this game in a local carnival. I don't recall if the cabinet moved though, so if somebody can actually let me know out there in the comments that I remember it did not move. Or maybe the one that I was playing was broken, who knows. Still a great game though. My last honorable mention here is going to be Star Wars Battle Pod. I mean, this game looks amazing. I mean, you got the curved screen setup combined with those sick graphics. I mean, this is just a dream come true for any Star Wars fan out there. I don't care if you're an old Star Wars fan or a new Star Wars fan. You need to play this game. Play it as soon as you can. And now for my top three. Here we go. So F355 Challenge or F355 Challenge comes in at number three from Sega. Why am I not surprised? I, I was floored when I first saw this cabinet. I mean, the size of it alone was just insane. I mean, look at it. To top it off, you're once again driving a Ferrari, but this time surrounded by three big screens to give you that feel that you are actually inside the car. I mean, a gorgeous cabinet that, again, that Ferrari style steering wheel, just iconic. Sega thought, you know what? Outrun was pretty cool. Let's kick it up 10 notches. This was the result. And at number two, we got the one, the only, the amazing Afterburner 2 by Sega, again. The full cockpit cabinet, it was just an amazing piece of work back then. I mean, it tilted forward, back during takeoff sequences, and during flight. It moved left to right while maneuvering. It didn't have a lot of lights and fancy knobs and gauges and whatnot, but I mean, the mechanics, the control flight stick, the afterburner throttle, and that soundtrack. Oh my god, the soundtrack. <laughs> let alone the game. I mean, the first time I sat in that cabinet and that music started playing, 
as I took off from the aircraft carrier and the cabinet tilted back, I got goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it right now. If you've never played this game on a full-size cabinet, you are missing something amazing. But if this is number two on my list, what in the world could be number one? <laughs> Galaxy Force 2 from who else? Sega. The standalone Super Deluxe version cabinet had you sitting down on this rig that spun a full 360 degrees as you flew through the four stages of the game. It, I mean, just look at it. It was revolutionary at that time. I had never seen anything like it. The game, the graphics, the music were just top-notch works of art. Well, when I used to live in Miami, there was a place called Pirates located at Coral Way. It was an arcade pizza joint that was an actual castle with an actual wooden bridge and an actual moat on it. It was just amazing. And they had so many arcade games there. And luckily, they had one of these deluxe uh, Galaxy Force cabinets. I mean, it cost a dollar to play back then, but it was well worth it. Now, the first time I played it, I was freaked out that it rotated. And it wasn't a slow rotation either. No, it spun around fast or slow depending on your ship's movement and control momentum. And I would have played it so much more, but it cost a full dollar. And my parents usually only gave me like five bucks to spend at any given time when I went there. But I always made sure that no matter how little money I had, a dollar was always reserved for this game. Unless it was broken. Which it tended to do. Quite often. I mean, to me back then, it felt like this arcade cabinet didn't belong there. It actually belonged in some kind of a, uh, a theme park as a carnival ride. I mean, that's how good it was. It was there, and for that, I am so grateful. So that is my number one immersive game cabinet. So what are some of the arcade games that you've played throughout the years that left a lasting impression on you? Let me know at the comments below. Also, let me know if I missed any big time arcade cabinets out there. I haven't seen them all. Hope you enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun going back and revisiting a lot of these arcades that I haven't played or thought about in some time. Hopefully, if you liked the video, you can go ahead and subscribe. I got a lot more great videos coming up. So until next time, take care of yourselves. You know, after doing this video, I just realized something. Sega needs to open up an arcade theme park or locations nationwide consisting of all their arcades. They can call it, I don't know, Sega Park. I will pay good money to get into these locations.